Hello everybody, welcome back to a another video and in this video I'm showing you all the secret blocks and items available in Minecraft Burger Edition 1.19 So if you enjoyed this video then please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Minecraft videos just like this one So I've done a lot of these kinds of videos in the past I'll leave some linked in the top right of your screen where I go through some of the secret blocks and items in Minecraft Burger Edition But here today I'll be showing you all of the different ones for Minecraft 1.19 and so all the blocks and items you see right behind me can be obtained within Minecraft Perk Edition without any add-ons or world editors or stuff like that. There are also some removed blocks and items you can get using inventory editors. I've also made a video on that. The link to that one will be in the top right of your screen as well. But all of these can be gotten by just using commands. And so let's go through these blocks one by one, starting with some obvious secret blocks and items and moving on to some more obscure ones that you might not have heard of. So first of all, the command blocks, you can get these by using slash gif at p command block like this. Here you can see all four options, the command block, the command block minecart, the chain command block and the repeating command block. And so the command block is of course used to execute any type of command. That you can put in this window up here and then it will run it if you activate it with a redstone signal. Then the chain command lock can be used to activate multiple commands within the same game tick. So at the same time you can link those together just like this. And you can also make these conditional so that they only activate once this command block has been activated successfully. Then there is the repeating command block which repeats its command every tick. So if you put a, a command say subscribe like this and set it to always active and go out. You will see it says subscribe every single tick in our chat. And we can also add a chain command block to this slash say thanks, make it conditional, always active. And there we go. Now we have subscribe and thanks executing in our chat. You can also put these kinds of commands in a command block in a minecart. So if you can put a command in here and then let the minecart run over a detector rail and then an activator rail, it will actually activate and display its command inside. There we go. Some awesome stuff going on right there. So those are the command blocks. Let's move on to the next secret block, which is the monster spawner. It's not too secret. It's also available in your creative inventory under monster spawner right there. So it's really not too secret. It also generates naturally in your world in, for example, dungeons, but also bastion remnants and woodland mansions. And it is used to summon in different mobs. If you right click the monster spawner with a spawn egg, so let's say a wandering trader spawn egg like this, you turn the monster spawner into a wandering trader spawner and there we go, we have a wandering trader with some trader llamas along with it. So this can be really useful if you're just in creative and you want to test out some kind of mob farm, you can just put in a spawner just like that and try it out. All right, then moving on to the item here in the bottom right, this is the lodestone compass. So this is not available in the creative inventory, but what we do have is of course the lodestone, which you make using a netherite ingot. And if we grab a normal compass, place down the lodestone and right click it with our compass like this, that makes this compass a lodestone compass and it will always point towards this lodestone. So if we fly around it, we can see it always points to that lodestone. And once we go, for example, into the nether, then this compass does not point towards the lodestone anymore. It just turns around randomly like this one I have over here. But for example, if you place lodestone in another dimension like the nether or the end then right click it with a compass then it will work in the other dimension so this is quite useful if you want to get back to your for wow thanks frog so as I was saying, it's quite useful if you want to get back to your nether portal to place a lodestone next to your nether portal in the nether, right click with a compass, and then you can always find it back using the lodestone compass in the nether. All right, then we'll move on to this column over here. So we see two beautiful purple blocks. So these seem to be just normal purple blocks, but actually they aren't. And there's also a barrier block right in between. So let's go over that one first, because that's one you might already know of. You give it to yourself by slash give at p barrier, just like this barrier enter and then you get this barrier block so this barrier block just works as an invisible block they can't walk through so if you're holding the barrier block you can see the particles within these blocks themselves if we don't hold that then those particles disappear and just have a wall of invisible blocks that just have an outline here in creative mode but don't have that outline in for example adventure mode so we cannot walk through it we can't fly through it or anything like that it is a barrier 
very nice. And you also get these particles if you destroy the block. Then these two blocks over here are quite special. So if we go into our creative inventory and search for purple, like this, purple, we'll see purple stairs, purple slab, purple block, and purple pillar. But that is pretty much it. However, for example, for quartz, you have quite a few more blocks. So there's also smooth quartz stairs, smooth quartz slab, quartz bricks, block of quartz, pillar quartz block, and chiseled quartz block, and smooth quartz block. So it's quite a few more than for the purple. And so we can see that there are a couple of blocks missing here from these purple ones. Like for example, why is there no smooth purple or why is there no chiseled purple? However, these blocks are actually in the game. I have them right here. This is chiseled purple and this is smooth purple. Actually it says tile.purple underscore block.smooth.name. And also the texture just looks identical to the usual purple block. But these are actually different and we can see that from the way we get them. So we can give ourselves purple block. So purple block like this. So if we give ourselves one of those, then afterwards we can fill in the data value of this purple block. If we put in zero, we just get purple block that's the usual one however if we put in one we'll see gave chiseled purple one to myself so that means we actually get a block of chiseled purple that looks identical to normal purple but it is a different block entirely and then if we put in two here we get the purple pillar which of course is already a block and if we put in three we get the tile.purple underscore block.smooth.name or smooth purple so yeah, those are just two oddities here in the game. Quite strange why they're in the game, but they are there nonetheless. So moving on to this column over here, we have the column that is the structure column pretty much. And so what we have here at the top is a structure void. Then we have a structure block and then we have another structure void, but slightly different. So let's grab these three blocks so let's start off with the structure block the structure block can be used to copy and paste but also rotate or mirror structures in your world if you want to know how to do this i have made a video on it for minecraft back edition i'll leave a link to that tutorial in the top right of your screen and there i also explain what the structure void is exactly supposed to do so the structure void actually makes it so that if you load a structure somewhere in your world it doesn't actually Destroy the blocks where in your original structure you had the structure void. It's quite complicated, but watch the tutorial on structure blocks if you want to know more about it. And so the structure block also has three different textures. So there's the original safe structure block, there's the load structure block, and there's also the corner structure block, which looks like this. So here are all three textures right next to each other. And so you get the structure blocks by using slash gif at p structure block like that. Then as for the structure void, it's quite strange here because we have this original structure void that looks like this, has red lines all around. But if you hold it in your hand, you can see there it's blue. And then this one is blue in my hand, but also blue in my hotbar, which is quite strange. If you place it down, it's just a red one again. And so usually if you put in slash gif at p structure void like this, enter you will get the red one like this it also overrides the other one so that's a little strange but we can see that if we just give it ourselves we get the red one that looks blue in our hand however if we put in a one and then a one like this enter then it becomes the blue one in our hotbar so this has been like this for a very long time and it's just a little bug that also gives it a new unique texture and look which is quite nice if you put it in an item frame also if you want to know how to get these invisible item frames on micro better edition then watch the tutorial i made link is at the top right of your screen it only works for pocket edition and windows 10 though okay so those are the structure blocks then let's move on to this part of the secret blocks and items these are the allow block the deny block and the border block so let's start with allow so allow and deny are actually used mainly for adventure maps because if you place down an allow block like this, then the player in adventure mode is allowed to place and break blocks above this allow block. So we can see that here, if we put ourselves into game mode adventure like this, we can see that we aren't allowed to break any blocks around here because that is how adventure mode works. But once we go over to the allow block, we can see that below it, we can't break any blocks, but above it, we can break this sand block. And furthermore, we can also place blocks atop the allow block all the way up to the build limit. And so we can see that if we break this block, it works, it works just fine. We're still in adventure mode and we can place break blocks all the way above this allow block. And will work for any block in the game. And then as for the deny block, this works, of course, oppositely. As you might expect, if you place this down, the player is not able to break or place any blocks above it. So let's place one here in creative mode. Of course, regularly you can't place or break any blocks in adventure anyway. So we need 
to do is go over to game mode survival like this and then if we try to break this block this sand block here we can see that it doesn't work we can break any other block we want we can place and break blocks above the allow block but as soon as we go over to the deny block we can't break that sand block and furthermore we also cannot place a sand block on top we can go underneath that works just fine but any block above the deny block is completely protected and you can't break or place any blocks there in survival mode then next is the border block which works similarly to the barrier block so you can place this like a cobblestone wall just like this and this makes a border in your world so in creative you can just fly over it just like that nothing too difficult but if we go into survival or adventure both will work here we will see that we will not be able to cross this border we can try to jump over it but that doesn't work we can walk around it here of course but we can't go over it and furthermore we can also not go below it and we're also not able to break any of these blocks below it either so this border stretches all the way from the bottom of the world all the way to the top of our world and we can see that through these particles that appear here above and below the border block so it sort of acts as a world border like it exists in java edition but then here in better condition that is this border However, here in better condition, this border doesn't actually work too well because all you need to pass it is just one ender pearl and you're right over it. That's not possible in Java Edition with the world border, but here in better condition, yeah, this border is pretty much useless if the player can get access to any ender pearls. All right, then there's two columns left. Let's move on to this one, which also includes the light block. Let's grab that. So we have the jigsaw block and all the different types of light blocks. And so don't worry about that dirt path you see on the screen as well. That was put there by accident. So let's start off with the jigsaw block. It's not available in the creative inventory and it is used to actually generate structures. So if a structure naturally generates in your world like a village or maybe an ancient city, they use these jigsaw blocks to connect the different parts of the structures. So if you just place one here, you got with commands like this, slash give at p jigsaw, then you just get empty, 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 empty. You can fill in different parts here, but that won't really do anything. It mainly just works if a structure naturally generates when you generate your world for the first time. And then there is also the light block. So the light block is, as its name already suggests, a block that emits light. So if we set it to nighttime here, and I go over here, we'll see that there is some light emitted here. So if we place down this light block, there we go, we get light level 15. So there are 16 different variants of this light block. All of them are showcased here from level 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up to light level 15. And each one emits more light. So the way you get these is by using slash gif at p light block, just like that. And then you can also put in the data value behind here, which is equal to the light level. So six, for example. And if you place down this block and then just hold a light block and then right click it, you can see you can increase the light level all the way up to light level 15. And afterwards, this goes back down to zero. And this also nicely shows the difference in light level on the floor here. As you can see right there, there's a difference in the light levels from 0 all the way up to 15. Alright, we'll move on to the final three items here. So we have an enchanted book, we have frosted ice, and we have the NPC spawn egg. So let's start with the enchanted book. So the enchanted book over here is special because it doesn't have any enchantments. So usually if you search for an enchanted book here in the creative inventory, it always has enchantment protection, thorn, smite, punch, curse of vanishing, swift sneak, whatever. It always has an enchantment. However, the enchanted book I have here in my inventory doesn't have any and so if we try to apply this to an item you will see that it does not work regardless of which item we put in here it will never work it would be nice if this would just give the enchantment glint to the item and not any enchantment but sadly that is not how it works and so the way to get this regular enchanted book is by just using slash gif at p enchanted book enter that is it that's all you need to do to get this enchanted book without any enchantments on it okay then next we have the frosted ice block so this is not available in the creative inventory and it is the block that appears when you use the frostwalker enchantment so let's do that let's put some frostwalker on these boots and let's put these boots on our feet there we go now if we move over to the water here, you'll see that the entire water turns into ice. But if we move away a little bit, we'll see that this ice slowly disappears behind us, cracks, and then goes away completely. 
And there we go, it's all gone. So the ice you see here is actually not normal ice, it is frosted ice. So you can also not get it here by middle clicking. Usually you can middle click a block and you get it, but that does not work here. And so there's only one way to get this frosted ice block, and that's by using the command slash gif at the frosted ice, like this. And that way you can get the frosted ice you can see here. So it has some unique properties in that it disappears after a short while. And then afterwards it also turns into a block of water. So let's remove these frost walker boots from our feet. And let's check out this frosted ice we have here. So let's place it in here for example. And we'll see that just like the frosted ice we saw before when using frost walker. It slowly cracks and then turns into a water source. And so it does this over and over again. Every single time we place it down it just turns into a water source like that. Alright, and then there's just one more secret item left, and that is this beautifully colorful spawn egg, the NPC spawn egg. So this is quite special, since if we try to give ourselves an NPC spawn egg, you will see it doesn't exist at all. And so you can't get it through commands, but you also cannot get it through the creative inventory. We can search for NPC here, it is not there. So how do you get this item? So to get this item, all you have to do is slash summon NPC like this. So the NPC is a secret mob in Minecraft Better Edition. I've made a video on more secret mobs in Minecraft Better Edition. Link to that video will be in the top right hand side of your screen. You can watch it right after this one. And so this is used to get some dialogue going in adventure maps for example. And you can also change the look of the NPC if you want and you can also add commands to these types of entities and so then the way to get this NPC spawn egg it's quite simple all you need to do is go up to the NPC and then use your middle mouse button if you're on computer or if you're using a controller go over to your settings to your controls and down here select a button that works for you for pick block so set this to and whatever button you want on your controller or just plug in the mouse and use button 3 which is the middle mouse button and use it to get the NPC spawn egg and of course as you might expect if you right click it yes you get another NPC and another NPC and another NPC so then you don't need to use the summon command and you can use this beautiful NPC spawn egg and all right, there we go. Those are all the secret blocks and items in Minecraft Better Edition 1.19. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Minecraft videos like this one. I want to thank my tier 3 member, the Smicklar. Thank you so much for becoming a tier 3 member. If you also become a member, click the blue join button below the video to check out the different tiers. But there we go. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope to see you all in the next one. So until then. Mmm, bye-bye!